uh, let's wrap it up with. Da, 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 write my time down. We're gonna wrap up the show with NBA small market teams want all thirty teams to return to action. They want the season to keep rolling, um, and I can understand where they're coming from. I I didn't at first. My initial thought was take the sixteen teams and take them down. It's a lot easier to put 16 teams in a bubble than it is to put 30 teams in a bubble, right? And that's the bubble is what they are focusing this whole plan on, right? Yep. They're not coming back until July 31st. I wouldn't be okay with the 16. If you're going to do the bubble and go straight to playoffs, you got to open it up to more than 16, 22, well, that, 24. That's the 16, though. It's Like, it's eight teams from each. So you already each have 16 playoff teams every year. That's what I'm saying. Like, it just it just take the playoff teams. And no, just go you, need, straight you to got to expand the playoffs because you don't know – who could have made it on those bubble teams? You got to let them in. I mean, I, I you got you just have to. You just in, have in to. In the East, you had a five game lead. But for it the doesn't. Magic. But in it's the principle West, of the matter. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. So, so the, the plan. It, but that was that was my thought. That was never what the the league was going to do. The plan. The league was going to bring twenty two teams, and yeah. basically do like a little bit of a round robin and whatnot. And I, I'm not going to get into the details of it. Uh, nope. You can go. I was on. Uh, they were going to start playoffs immediately, but in a different kind of playoff format. Yeah, well, they, they were going to do, what is it, five games to lead in? And it was, yeah. uh, and then you would do like a round robin for that last, uh, the last playoff seed, and then go from there, or whatever. Um, uh, let's see. Damien, by the way, said uh, if baseball does come back, they should find a way to prevent people from getting hit in the head with these balls and bats uh, uh, rather than worrying about If they about haven't done already the nets all the way down for all 30 teams. Then, then we have a different problem with baseball. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, when I was at Fenway, they had the Nets all the way down. At most, it, most teams years do. Ago, I, last think, year? I think all teams. Ago. I think all teams are supposed to have it by this year. But it, even still, even if you there's just no way it didn't affect your view at all. The best seats in the house are right behind home plate, are right behind the dugout, and and they've been having the Nets the the entire existence of baseball. Yeah. So, you um, know, the Brown Yeti, them. the Brown Yeti said about the NBA. Let's get back in the NBA. Yeah. Top six teams will be the only ones that'll win it, so just expand it. Really, I mean, you can basically put that up to the top four seats. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, I don't think anything outside of uh, that's going to win. Joseph said, let the 22nd seed beat the Lakers or Bucks, and then they're screwed. Yeah, that's that's what they want to avoid happening is uh, they're still going to have seven-game playoff series. Like, that's still going to happen. So the odds of these upsets, very, very small. Very small. Um very rarely do you get an eight seed over one seed or a seven seed over two seed. That that just doesn't happen very often. Um, I mean, we'll see about this year. I mean, we don't know what this is going to be like. But but obviously, if you are an uh, an upper seed, you are going to get more chances to get those wins than you know just having a five game series or something along those yeah. lines. So uh, so they're still going to do that. But uh, it you explain this to me really really well. Explain where the small market teams are coming from. Well, I don't even know that it's the small market teams as much as it's the players. Um, so I, I, I read something today about the money breakdown. I don't think – now, this is all based off of something I read today, okay? So this is where my information is. It could be right. could be completely wrong. I read something wrong all the time. NBA players don't make any money. They don't get game checks or playoff checks, okay? So if you're a player, they you want to finish the season – so you can get paid for all those games that you didn't play, all right? Okay. And and if they just jump straight into the playoffs, they would figure out a way to give them some money for it, but the owners basically take all the playoff money, they throw it in the revenue pile, and make a lot of money off of the playoffs, and that goes to raising the salary cap next year because of the amount of money and revenue that they took in the year before. So – it's always been a good deal for the players to not worry about making playoff money. Some players have uh, bonuses Incentives. thrown into yeah. their contracts and things of that nature, but that's not a standard thing. That is an individual player or coach thing. Um, but but if you're a a you know fair to middle and run of the mill player, you want to finish these games so you can finish getting paid this year. Because if you just start the playoffs. I don't know what they do with all that leftover money they were supposed to pay these guys and all the players that didn't make the playoffs. Do you just, well, sorry, get, we're not finishing. You didn't play those last games, so I can't pay you for those last games. Yeah. 
Um, and there's a very, there's always a financial aspect to oh, every one of these they, deals. You're looking at it That's from the only the reason side. we have any of the problems we have, by the way, is money. Um, right. You're, so. you're looking at it from a player side. Uh, the article that I was reading near the end of the NBA's Board of Governors call on Friday, Oklahoma City Thunder owner Clay Bennett delivered an impassioned soliloquy on why the league and owners need to consider the competitive and financial plights of small market teams that could be left out of the season's summer resumption in Orlando, Florida, and the potential symbolic power of all 30 teams gathering there to play as one United uh, Association. So what this whole thing boils down to, uh, the NBA had planned on inviting 22 teams to restart the season, and it was just the teams that really had a playoff shot. Um, Bennett wanted to know, was there a way to bring back all 30? He said the inequities facing smaller markets had to shape the league's thinking. Uh, nine months without games, March to December could have an impact on developing players, cultivating sponsorships, and selling tickets in markets where franchises struggle to gain a hold. Uh, yep. For those teams left out of the playoffs, there's already been dialogue on the possibility of a mandatory summer training camp and regional fall leagues of four or five teams that could bridge the lengthy gap between seasons. Uh, those are ideas many teams consider vital, and there's an expectation that the NBA will raise possible scenarios such as these with the Players Association. Uh, he said the message was something bigger, reminding people that some teams can't just reopen the doors in nine or ten months and so easily sell tickets or a sponsorship without having uh, played basketball for that long. Um, I mean, that's that's a big part of this is, I mean, the Grizzlies are a small market team. They've got a devout fan base, but it is not a massive fan base. No, no, they can't sell out tomorrow just by opening the doors. Here's the other thing they got to think of. These small market teams are legit in that sponsorship money. Listen, if you're a, a, like a company, a, a Memphis-owned company that that bought a sponsorship for the FedEx Forum for you know for the for the Grizzlies or whatever, okay, right. and your banner electronically ran all the way around the forum, you know, thirty-five times during a game of some sorts, okay, you paid for the year, all right, you're not getting any money back. Yeah. And when the next season starts, they're going to ask for another check, and I don't know that they're going to prorate what last year's was. So you might lose some because these are locally owned stores and businesses. Now, they're obviously super profitable businesses, or else they wouldn't be advertising. Right, but how profitable the are they right now? But are they profitable enough to say, oh, I can just piss away a quarter of the season in my returns, and that'd be just fine? That, that's that's the, issue. the issue. Damien said NBA should have the teams in group stage teams like in the World Cup and have the top two teams of each group play for the title and the last two teams play for the number one pick instead of having a lottery draft. Um, I would love the world. The, Bill Simmons has done a thing yeah. where he breaks down the whole World Cup scenario. I would actually really enjoy a World Cup scenario. And instead of the lottery, you have the bottom teams play for the number one, number two, number three pick. You have them play yeah. for it. I'd be and okay the winners that. get it, not the losers. Yeah, as opposed to an actual lottery with ping pong balls and where it's just the luck of the draw. You know, I'm not saying do it forever, but this year we got a weird jacked up year. Yeah, make it entertaining. Give Let's people go. a reason to watch. Yeah, like, that's the no, I'm, I'm thing. And I absolutely think there's enough courts in Orlando that you could absolutely play out all 30 teams come there because you're just going to play one right after another, right after another, like like NCAA tournament week one situation is. It, you could dominate TV from basically noon every day until, you know, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, I think, I think it's a fantastic idea. It's not, it's not undoable at all. No, you got that right. However, more than likely, we are going to find a way to get to the regular 16, uh, whether it is – uh, just the 1 through 16 in the NBA standings as opposed to conferences. Um, ben Jump City said, that makes sense. Sacramento has that kind of thing, too. One of our main sponsors is an almond company. Big company, yeah. but local. Yeah, Memphis does local. the same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, more than likely, we will get to, they'll, they'll find a way to bring in as many as they can, and they will find a way to drive it down to 16, and then they will play a regular playoff season. Right, seven games, like seven game series, and then they'll go from there because they don't. The biggest thing I have heard from all of the officials involved with the NBA is they don't want an asterisk next to this year's this championship. championship. That's that's what I believe to, too. I've I've heard that multiple times from several different NBA guys that I've listened to and read. Is 
they really don't want an asterisk to this season. Yeah. They want the champion to be the champion and people not to say, oh, look at that year. That year was weird. We're not going to count that. Yeah. That's it. That's and, why I believe it is going to be seven game series all the way through. That they, right. won't get, they might find a weird ass way to get us there. But if you play, they believe if you play seven game series, the best team wins all those series 100% of the time. And therefore, no matter how you get 16, 22, all 30 in some weird tournament, it doesn't matter. They fully believe the best team will win it all. Yeah. And I, and I, I think I, I, I agree. agree with them. Yeah. I hate, I hate the seven game series early in the series, early in the rounds. It makes their playoffs last so long. But I understand it. Yes, because it gives. I can every- dislike it and totally understand why yes. they do it, and kind of agree with it. Their choice is to get the best champion they can every year. Yeah, the NCAA tournament is completely different because it is a oh yeah. Game Rarely do we think the consensus best team in the country wins that thing. Damian said, "Why not have a best of three? Uh, for the exact reasons we were just telling you. Too many upsets. You won't get a true champion. You yeah. just won't. A- at least not." according to NBA standards, right? Yeah. So you you want the best team to be able to win four games and give them the most opportunities to do so. That's so Bill Simmons came up with a, a philosophy of bumping them to five games, but the road team, the the visiting team, or the lower seed only gets one home game. It, well, but, it, I mean, does it matter if it's all in the same arena? Like, it. Well, no, no, I'm talking about in the future, like the reason why. No, if they're doing the bubble, it doesn't oh, matter. Oh, you're talking about for the future. But in the future, yeah. to just shorten the, the playoffs and make them not last forever, it the, like the reason we have the upsets is, is you could go up two games to one and, you know, then go home for two games and you got a chance to, to upset the other team pretty quickly or whatever. Or you win one of the first two games and then you win your two home games the lower C can win it pretty easily, but if you made it a two-one-two series, then it'd be much harder for the road team to win. That's true. That's true. The and Eddie, it was short in the season. Now, but once again, these owners don't want less playoff games. No, they, they want, want more. more playoff. Yeah, it's games. better so for TV. Get that anyway. Be- better It'd be for, better the for the sport. The owners won't do it. Uh, the Brown Yeti said to me, "It doesn't matter the format. If you win, you're the best. Even if you were a 16 seed in a normal year." Uh, I agree. I do agree that if you if you go through whatever your playoff series is and you win it, we crown you the champ. And you can argue, well, this team was better than that. I don't care. If you didn't hold the trophy at the end of the year, I'm I'm fully believing that. I, I will say this. I don't agree that that means that you were the best. It means that you were the best at that point. But it doesn't um, matter. Well, no, can, it doesn't can, matter. You can, I mean, the champion's you the champion. Can, you can put all the caveats you want in there. They're the champion. You're not. Yeah, yeah. And and I, 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 I won't agree or I won't disagree with that. At all, no. um, but it, but the term best—that's the Bama fan in you saying we missed the playoffs because we couldn't beat LSU or Auburn, but we're still the best team in the country. I get no. it. I understand. No, that's not what that. I means get that at all. It's one hundred percent where that is. That's a, <laughs> you are so ridiculous. I think that's a good spot for us to end the show to get out of here. You guys have been magnificent. Everybody that's jumped in the comments, we appreciate all of you as always. You drive the conversation, and we love you for it. Uh, go over to winningcureseverything dot com. Make sure you are subscribed on all the different platforms. We're on Periscope every day. We are on Twitch every day, on Facebook, and on YouTube. All of that stuff is fantastic. Uh, ben said main schedule graphic. Yeah, by the way, did you see that? The main football what? schedule graphic? They they had no. uh, like an offensive lineman catching a touchdown pass. And it's, yeah, it's, boy. Just, it's a fat guy with his, his gut hanging out of the jersey, catching a pass one-handed. It was fantastic. That so, makes my heart smile. I yeah. will be looking that up. Oh, it was really good. I uh, I retweeted it. You can, you can go check out my uh, Twitter feed, at Gary WCE, everybody. Um, yeah, we love you guys for jumping in the chat. You guys are awesome. Um, I mean, I, I can't thank you enough. Every single day, you help Hey, show. everybody, be safe. Yes. Just be safe out there. Gary hey. ends the show every week saying, take, take care, care of yourself. one another. Yeah. Let's take care of one another, please. A hundred percent. Times are a little bit crazy. If you missed what I said at the beginning of the show, Make sure that you go back and download the podcast and listen to that. Uh, we want everybody to know what side we're on, and uh, we're on everybody's side. That's the way it goes. So, you guys have been magnificent. As always, go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi is the South's premier sports gambling destination. Uh, as always, I say it every single day, and I'm going to continue to do it from now until the end of time. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other, and we will see you again tomorrow. 
Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.